Hey guys, it's Kay, I hope you're all well. Now in today's video, I'm going to show you the best free gaming apps you can install on your NVIDIA Shield TV. Now I've got the NVIDIA Shield TV Pro here, but these gaming setups will also work on the normal NVIDIA Shield TV, the cylindrical one. And the great thing is that they allow you to play thousands of games all in one place. Round one. So guys, if you're interested in any of these projects, please do keep on watching. And also consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. I'm frequently producing two or three videos a week. So subscribe and hit that bell for notifications, so you know when I release a new video. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, reviews and unboxings, I do everything including Fire Stick, Raspberry Pi and Android TV tips and tricks. So subscribe and hit the notification button. So you can play your favourite PC games on your big screen TV. And the icing on the cake is that you can even set up an emulator for retro gaming. Now the games emulator in question is RetroArch. Now for those of you who don't know, RetroArch is a front end for emulators, games engines and media players. It lets you run classic games for a wide range of computers and consoles through its slick graphical interface. So in this video I'm going to show you how to install RetroArch and install some games and then play them. I'll also be showing you how to connect a Bluetooth controller. Now in my case this controller is the PS4 controller, but you can of course use any Bluetooth controller. Ok without further ado let's get on with it. So once you switch on your NVIDIA Shield, this is the home screen you'll see. What you'll get is recommendations for movies, TVs, shows, apps and games. Now you can manually sort your apps or you can enable automatic sorting based on your usage. And all your settings are just a press of a button away. Ok so the first thing we need to do is pair a Bluetooth controller. So click on the settings button and scroll down to remotes and accessories. And then scroll down to add Bluetooth accessories and select. The Shield is now in Bluetooth search mode. You now pick up your Bluetooth controller and put it in pairing mode and eventually it will be found and it will show up on your screen. And the pairing process will begin. Once you get the following message just select it and that's it you now have a Bluetooth controller that works with your shield. So getting RetroArch is just a simple matter of going to the Google Play Store and searching for RetroArch. Now you'll come across two versions, the 64 bit version and the 32 bit version. I chose the 32 bit version. Obviously you will have to wait for it to install, I've already installed it. Now this is RetroArch's front end. And as you can see it's picked up my Bluetooth gamepad. Now on first glance this all looks very daunting, but don't worry I'm going to guide you through this. Now the first thing we're going to do is download a core, which is a plugin tailored to work with a particular platform you're trying to emulate. So for example, before playing a PlayStation Portable game, we need to download a core that supports PlayStation Portable. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. Once you select it, it will download and extract it automatically. I'm also going to download the Sega Genesis core, also the Sega Pico Drive, and not forgetting the Sega Dreamcast, and also the Super Nintendo, and why not the Nintendo 64. And last but not least, the Nintendo GameCube. Ok now we've finished that, we need to scroll all the way back to the main menu, and we're going to scroll down to Online Updater. From here we're going to select Update Installed Cores, now this just makes sure we have the latest version of the cores we just downloaded. Ok back at the main menu, we're going to go down to Settings, and scroll down to Input, scroll down to hotkeys and select menu toggle gamepad combo. Now I'm going to select L3 and R3. This allows you to exit any game to the main menu. Ok now the next thing we're going to do is scan for our games ROMs. Now I can't tell you where to get these but a simple google search should suffice. So you want to go down to storage and you should look for a folder that contains a lot of numbers in its name. And as you can see I call my folder RetroArch and within that folder I have all the individual games folders. And what you need to do is scan these folders for the games. So I'm going to go through each individual folder and scan for each of those individual games. Ok so the next one I'm going to do is PlayStation. Now the next one is the Sega Mega Drive. Now I have quite a lot of ROMs for this so it can take quite a while. So meanwhile I'll also scan for my SNES games. Ok now when the majority of that is all done, you can scroll down and you'll see some new folders with some snazzy icons. I've got my Mega Drive, Nintendo 64, PlayStation Portable and my Super Nintendo. Now my Mega Drive folder is still scanning in the background but that's ok you're still going to be able to play the games it's scanned so far. Ok let's try some PlayStation Portable games. So I think I'll try Mortal Kombat first. Click on Run and then choose the emulator you're going to run it with. So PlayStation Portable. So the core is now set and we just play. Now the Nvidia Shield should have no problem playing these games. It's got more than enough grunt under its bonnet to handle all the mechanics here. Now as you can see the gameplay is fluid and it's fast and there's no screen tearing. Now I'm going to try my Mega Drive emulator next. 
and I think I'm going to go with Aero Acro Rat. So again, we click on Run and then associate the core. And this time I'm going to use the Pico drive. Okay, so this is a horizontal scroller on a timer. Now getting at the game, we just press those hotkeys we assigned earlier, which was L3 and R3. Let's take a quick look at body count next. Again, click run and then associate the core. And really, it's as simple as that, guys. So this is more of a shoot 'em up. Okay, now I'm going to try Nintendo 64. Okay, let's try a bit of Super Nintendo and Donkey Kong. Okay guys, I'm back on the PSP and I'm going to have a go at MotoGP. And that's it guys, you now have your system up and running and you can play to your heart's content. Now whilst that all seemed a lot to set up, it doesn't really take more than a few minutes once you have all your ROM files. Now with RetroArch installed, you have one device for streaming media, playing new games, and then playing your favourite vintage games also. Now in today's video, I'm going to show you a game streaming service, which is similar to Amazon Prime TV and Netflix, but it's just for games, and it's free. And the great thing is, it will work on a whole host of devices including the PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, or even a tablet, mobile, or PC. And best of all, your Fi Stick TV, which is what I'm using to show you today. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, stick around. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, reviews, and unboxings, I do everything including Fi Stick, Raspberry Pi, and Android TV tips and tricks. So subscribe and hit the notification button. Now, once you're in the app, you'll see this home screen. And as you can see, it's nice and chunky, which takes me back to the old retro gaming consoles. Navigating through the games with your remote control is pretty easy. And it's even easier if you're using a tablet or phone, you just scroll through with your finger. Now the games are broken up into genres, so you can distinguish between arcade games, beat-em-ups, text adventures, and so on. Now once you've found the game you're looking for, just select it and it'll take you to the game screen. And from here you can see you get some basic information about the game and you've got a challenges tab and a scores and similar tab. Now when games have challenges, they allow you to quickly jump into a game and try to achieve certain goals. And there's leaderboards and achievement medals available. And you can challenge friends with Anstream memberships to beat your scores. When you click on play, you'll get the following screen telling you how to play the game with your Fire Stick TV controller. Now if you were playing the game on a different device, it would similarly tell you how to play the game on that device. Now I'm going to show you some gameplay and I'm going to be quiet for a minute. Now what I will 
will say is that the graphics look great, the controller is very responsive, considering the games are streamed over the internet. Now you can quit the game at any point by just pressing the back button and you'll get this menu. And simply scroll down to quit game, it'll ask you if you're sure, just ok that, and it'll bring you to a little score sheet, which lets you know how well you did compared to other people playing the same game. Now you'll get a similar screen for every game you play on this app, which is great because it adds an extra element of rivalry. Now, going back to the home screen, along the top you've got some menu options. And the first one across is the search function, which allows you to search for games. All you need to do is just type in the first few letters of a game, and the search will bring up all the games with that word in their title. Now I'm particularly fond of Manic Miner, back from the old ZX Spectrum days, so if I just type in the first word Manic, it should bring up the search. And sure enough, it's the first game on the list. And again, if you select it, it'll show you how to play the game with your remote control. Now guys, do bear with me, as I just can't resist not playing this game. Now this game may look simple, but believe me, it takes a lot of attention and timing to get it right. And that's what kept people coming back to these old games. Like I mentioned before, some games do require a proper gamepad and won't be able to be played with your Fire Stick remote. Now if you want to play these games, just simply connect a Bluetooth gamepad. Most cheap ones of Amazon will easily connect to your Fire Stick TV. Now across from the search function is your profile tab. And this will summarise all your achievements, the challenges you've won and lost, and the number of individual games you've played. And it'll list the most recent. And the next tab across from profile is the achievements tab. In here you'll find your achievements in detail, and your current progress on new achievements. Now across from the achievements tab is your messages tab, and currently there's no messages for me. Across from that tab we've got our latest tournaments tab, and as the name suggests you can find out what the latest challenges are on all of the games. And the great thing is if you do do well in these challenges you get gems which you can spend within the app. Ok so how do we get this great app on our devices? Well it's as simple as going to your respective app store and searching for it. So currently I'm on the Amazon Fire Stick, so I'm just going to do a search for this app. And the name of this app is Antstream, so I'll just type that in now, and press enter. And that's it guys, it should be the first one on the list. Now when you first enter the app, it will ask you to create an account before you can play any of the games. And all you need is basically an email address, or you can log in with the Facebook. Anyway guys, if you found this video helpful, do give us a like, and please do consider subscribing, as I do loads of more content like this, on a regular basis. Now in today's video I'm going to be looking at gaming on the Nvidia Shield TV, and in particular this app which has an extensive library of games. Now essentially it's an emulator, which turns your Nvidia Shield TV into a fully fledged retro arcade machine. Now the great thing about this application is that it automatically combines emulators and games ROM downloads in the same package, which means you don't have to configure anything complicated, or download any ROM separately and then mess about transferring them to folders, you just run it and play. In this video I'm going to show you how easy it is to get it set up and running. So without further ado, let's get started. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, reviews and unboxings, I do everything including Fire Stick, Raspberry Pi and Android TV tips and tricks, so subscribe and hit the notification button. Ok so let's take a quick look around and see what we get with this app. In the top right hand corner we can see we've got 9.2GB of space, this is because I've got the Nvidia Shield TV Pro with 16GB of hard disk. Now on this home screen you can see you've got various tiles, on the left side we've got ranking, latest and search, and these are self explanatory. And to the right of these we've got some game tiles, which I suppose are games they're showcasing. Clicking on the tile will take me to the games detail page, and to help us decide if we want to download and play this game, we've got some screenshots here. And yeah, if you like the look of it, you can just click on the download button, and it will download to your Nvidia Shield. And I will download a couple of games further in the video. Yeah, so there looks like there's some pretty interesting games here. And like I said, if you like these from here, you can just click on them and download them. So that's your recommended page. Now if you scroll across, you'll come to the topics page. And I think this just covers trending topics. Now scrolling across from there, we come to my favourite section, the category section. We've got a PlayStation Portable category, an N64 category, and a Sega Dreamcast category. Across from that, we've got a MAME Arcade category, we've got Super Nintendo, and a Mega Drive category below that. I'm going to go in the PlayStation Portable section, 
Some of these games have got some really good graphics. Okay, let's say we like the look of Street Fighter Alpha 3. To double check, we take a look at the screenshots, and yeah, this looks pretty cool. Now to play this game, all we need to do is click on the download button and wait for it to download. Now this shouldn't take more than a few minutes, depending on the speed of your internet. And you'll get a download percentage bar at the bottom of the icon there. Now I'm also going to add it to my favourites. Now while that's downloading, I can go and browse for more games, and I like the look of racing. Let's take a look at Tokyo Highway. Now again, just to make sure I like this game, I'm going to take a look at the screenshots. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. And I can quickly come out again, and then I can go into the main screen and have a look at some action games. Now again, we just select the game we're interested in, and we can view the screenshots and download if we want. Now coming back to the main home screen, we can move across from categories to a fight section, which doesn't seem to have much in it. Across from there, we've got the manage section. And just like the name suggests, you can manage your games. Clicking on the check update button will check if your games need updating. Clicking on the download manager will let you view what you're downloading. And of course, I'm still downloading Street Fighter. You've got the option to uninstall a game from here. Now, if you do have external storage plugged in, you can view it here under storage device. And of course, you can view my favorites if you have been clicking on the heart icon next to the games. And if you haven't already downloaded it, you can download it from here. Just click on the details and you'll get the option to download. It's handy if you're just going through quickly and searching for games. You can favourite the ones you like and then later download them. Now another great feature is the search function. Just typing in the first few letters of a game will bring up a list. And just what I wanted, Super Mario's. And I'm just going to click on download and it's almost instantaneous because this is just a 41 kilobyte file size. Now the file may be small but the enjoyment is massive. Now to make gameplay more enjoyable, the first thing I'm going to do is pair a controller. And I'm going to pair my PlayStation 4 controller. Now the process will be similar on all Bluetooth controllers. So head on over to Settings and scroll down to Remotes and Accessories and select it. And from here we just scroll down to Add Accessory. Now your NVIDIA Shield will start searching for a Bluetooth controller. So now I'm going to grab hold of my PlayStation 4 controller and press on the PlayStation button and the Share button together. And the light should start flashing on the PlayStation controller indicating it's ready for pairing. As you can see, it's shown up on the NVIDIA Shield and it's requesting to confirm a Bluetooth pair. So just click on pair and that's it, you're done. You can now use your Bluetooth controller on your NVIDIA Shield TV. Okay, so now I'm going to head back into the emulation app and I'm going to have a go at playing that Tekken 6 I downloaded earlier. Now it looks like it's completed downloading, so I'm just going to click on it. Now before you press the launch button, make sure you've got the wireless controller selected in the controller window. This will allow you to use your PS4 controller we connected earlier. Okay guys, I'm going to be quiet for a minute and let you watch the gameplay. Notice how cool the graphics look and the lack of stuttering in the gameplay. Now this is just the intro video, but look how clear and lifelike it is. And remember, this game is a good few years old. Okay, I think that's enough of that. Now into the gameplay. Round 1 now the other game I downloaded was Street Fighter Alpha 3, so let's take a quick look. Now again, we need to make sure we've got wireless controller selected. And again with this game we've got a nice little intro. Street Fighter Alpha 3. Okay, I'm just going to let this play and give you a feeling of what it's like. Select your fighting style. So as you can see guys, it's pretty flawless gameplay. Okay guys, so if you haven't already guessed what the name of the app is, it's called Happy Chick. And to get all this game functionality, we only need to download one file. And to download that file, we need an app called Downloader. So if we go into our Google Play Store and search for Downloader, you should see it there. Just download it. Now once you've opened up Downloader, just type in the following address. https colon forward slash forward slash 
B I T full stop L Y forward slash three T capital K O J O capital P. Press enter and then just wait for it to download. Now download should take a couple of minutes depending on the speed of your network. Eventually you'll see the following screen. Now some people might be alarmed by some of these access rights, but don't worry, you can disable them in the NVIDIA Shield settings. So just click to install for the moment. Again, this should take about a minute. Then just click on done. Now because we installed the file, we can delete it. So we've now installed Happy Chick. Now there's a few things we should do before we run the Happy Chick. And the first one of these is to find it. Now because we siloaded the app, you won't find it in the app section. We need to go into the settings and scroll down to apps. And select it and then scroll down to see all apps. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you should see Happy Chick. Now this seems like a bit of pain to get a happy chick, but you can get some apps. That'll put all your side loaded apps into a folder on your desktop. Anyway, we're here to change the permissions of the app. So scroll on down to the bottom and click on permissions. Now I'm going to disable microphone and telephone permissions. So guys, if you were worried about these permissions, you can now safely open up the app. To be honest, I've been using the app for a while and I haven't had any issues. Anyway guys, I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, give us a like and maybe even a subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one.